I'll tell you just a little bit about my story, but then the rest of the time is all about you. So my story is that I left school at the end of age of 18, and actually the very, very first thing I wanted to be was an author. That was the very first thing I wanted to be. Um, and when I left school, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, I wanted to do something that kind of looks a little bit like writing. And so I ended up working for the Witch Stabler magazines and books. I worked there for 10 years. I was responsible for a number of things, including over a period of time being a press officer and training people to appear on TV and radio, something that I really, really loved. I then um, was made redundant. Anyone in the room been made redundant? in the past. Keep your hands up if it's the best thing that ever happened to you. Isn't it interesting? Often is. You battle it at the time, but often it ends up being a wonderful opportunity. Um, I use it as an opportunity to pursue my passion, which then was to become a successful singer. I want to be more successful than Seal. Anyone remember Seal, the singer? It so didn't happen. I didn't become more successful than him. But what did happen was I met lots of people who struggled with life balance, confidence, and so on. In between, I was a Samaritan volunteer, and I became co-director of the Samaritans in central London. Um, and then over the last 15 odd years or so, I've been a coach. I've coached all sorts of people, singers, performers, pop stars, millionaires, entrepreneurs, entertainers, you name it, and people like yourself and myself. And I was in an event here a few years into running a business about 11 years ago. I was sat in one of the seats over there. A contact of mine said, come to this event at the British Library. And I hadn't, didn't know the British Library did business events. It was one of their entrepreneurial events. And in fact, it was a precursor to the event that I just mentioned. It was called the Rise and Rise of Black British Entrepreneurs. I was there and I, and I asked an intelligent, um, challenging question. By the way, always ask intelligent, challenging questions. Why? When you're in the audience, why? All of a sudden, yeah, you, people notice you become the most visible person in the room. Anyway, cutting a long story short, I asked an intelligent, challenging question. It was around the time that the British Library were building the business and IP centre, and over the last 10 years, I've been their life coach and business coach partner. So visibility is really, really important. So from a conversation, um, I'm standing in front of you now. So that's a little bit about my, my story. But um, today, as we talk about this thing about um, building an authentic business network, uh, I think the first thing we need to think about is who you are and taking stock. So I want to invite you just to really think about a couple of things. I think when you're building your network, and there's two bits of that, of course, isn't there? There's your existing network, all the people you know through all the years that you've been alive and all the things that you've done over your career. What we're wanting to do is we're wanting to be three things. We want to be strategic. In other words, we've got to think about what kind of contacts do we need, what kind of information do we need, what kind of support do we need, what kind of customers is it we're looking for. So we've got to be strategic and effective. We want to be authentic. In other words, we want to be ourselves. I have a saying that authenticity is very hard to fake. I have another saying that if you're not yourself, people will look right for you and they'll see a pale imitation of someone else, won't they? So you know in your heart of hearts if somebody's authentic. And, and you're wanting to be organic. In other words, you're wanting those business relationships to build naturally and organically. It's like any rich relationship. It's likely to develop organically. So I want you to think for a moment, where are you at right now? Where are you at right now? Maybe a point of transition. Maybe you've just started. Maybe just dipping your toe in the water. Maybe you've been going for a while. Maybe you're thinking about it. I also want you to think about or write down, and this is important, you know, what contacts and connections do you already have so think about that. What kind of contacts and connections do you already have? You might think, oh, actually, I've got a large network of friends. I've got lots of people I used to work with. I've got people I know from uni. I've got lots of people in this field, blah, blah, blah. And also, crucially, what skills and resources and contacts do you need? So you might be thinking, OK, I need a web designer. I need an accountant. I need somebody to help me with law. I need somebody who can help me find some customers. I need about 10 customers a month. Write down what's precisely that you need. And then it's also worth thinking about what your priorities within that. You might think, okay, my first priority is to get the website up. Okay, my first priority is to find out, is to write a business plan or whatever it is. What are your priorities? And then be honest with yourself. Where is it that you're strong and where is it that you're weak? Where are you strong and where is it that you're weak? So when I started, I wasn't really weak on some of the finance kind of related stuff or spreadsheets or whatever. You've got to be very, very, very honest with you as an entrepreneur. Okay. So, in terms of networking, who already has already been out there and started doing quite a lot of networking? Raise your hands if you have. Yeah? And raise your hands. Those of you who like networking, could you raise your hands? Those of you who kind of hate it, raise your hands. It's quite common. It's quite common. I run a workshop here once every month called Networking for Success. 
Um, uh, so we run it once a month, which just helps people to network authentically, strategically, and effectively. And I'm gonna be sharing some of the tips from it here. But here are some of the benefits, contacts, leads, connections, friendships, peers, all of these different things. For me, every single opportunity that's happened in my entire life and my entire career has come through networking, from speaking to people. Every single opportunity has come through speaking to people. So I'm really passionate about speaking to people. But very often, and it's been alluded to before by some of the other speakers, we often go to events and so on, and we're often very British, and we go into an event and we sit down. So we arrive at an event, don't we? And we kind of sit down. And we sit down, and we usually sit down. Guess where? Where do we usually sit down? Right at the back. We hope that nobody's going to see us, even though we're trying to build a business. How crazy is that? So we sit down at the back. We hope that nobody's going to see us. And we sit down, don't we? And we sit down like this. And then there's people either side of us. But guess what? I'm not speaking to them. I'm like this, because I'm thinking it's all about what's on the stage or the person on the stage. And I'm not speaking to the person next to me. What's your name, by the way? Louise. Louise, what do you do? I help people make more money from their businesses and from themselves. Wow, you didn't need to be in the next session. I like that. And <laughs> amazing, Louise. And what kind of contacts are you looking for? Uh, well, lots of really wide, broad contacts in the creative industries, mainly. So is, is that the people that you work with, people in creative industries? So anyone in the creative industries you're looking for here today? And have you met any people so far today? Oh, yes. Yes, I have. And how about you, my friend? What's your name? I'm Pippa. Um, and I'm a set and experienced designer, basically. For, so, yeah. Set designer, do you say? Yeah. And what kind of contacts are you looking for? Um, I am open to different kind of contacts at the moment. I'm about to start an events kind of company, but maybe specialising in weddings. Have you spoken to my friend here yet? We have spoken lots. <laughs> you have? Did you, did, you, did you know each other before? No, we didn't. Hello. Do you see what I'm talking about? <laughs> do you see what I mean? And that was just by chance. Do you know what I mean? Isn't that interesting? The magic of that. Have you had a conversation with the person next to you yet? Have you? You have? Could you do me a huge favor? Could you just stand up and just shake a hand and make a friend in every direction? Say, to, say hello to the person in each direction to you. You're right. What's your name? I'll come down. I'll come down. What's your name? Okay. But oh no, it's okay. I won't put you on. I won't put you on camera. Put you down. Are you enjoying the thing? Has it been useful? And pause. And pause. And freeze. And let's take our seats. And please do. Please do continue the conversations afterward. Will you? Con will you continue the conversations afterwards or in the break? My challenge to you, by the way, is for the rest of the day, at least have seven conversations with seven strangers. Because you just never know who you're going to meet. Sometimes at these things, we think it's all about the content, it's all about the speaker. It's very often about the person, two seats to left, right of you. When people come to my networking for success event, or they come to my Soul Trader event here at the British Library, I'm always fascinated by looking at the list, and I often see all of these kind of synergies. And the question is, will those people ever have that conversation? So the first thing I want to, to think about today, and especially when we're small businesses and when we're starting out, is think about who is in your existing network. I go through this in a lot, lot of detail in the book Soul Trader, but just a very quick tip. What I invite you to do is take a really big piece of paper or lots of A4 pieces of paper and sellotape it together on the back and map out all the people you, you know. So this kind of goes chronologically for your life. Friends, family, people you know from school, college, university, the first job you did, the second job you did, etc. And then just list everybody you know. List everybody apart from the people you dislike or you hate. Okay, so list everybody, right? And you're, you're likely to have some blind spots. So for example, if I was to do this, I probably would forget my brother, but my brother works, and one of my brothers works in international talent management. So there's a lot of synergy there as, as I'm a coach, right? But we've never sat down and had that conversation. So you're likely to have these blind spots. List, so you list everybody, put a tick next to anyone who could be useful in any way, shape or form and put in brackets in what way they might be able to help you. So you might think, oh yeah, Georgina, um, she's really good with CVs. She might be able to help me update my CV. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Um, nephew is really good at websites. Maybe they can help me build a website, etc., etc., etc. 
because then all of a sudden you can start utilizing your existing networks. So I want you to begin to think about all those people who could help you. Also indicate people who are fans and ambassadors of you, you know, people who are fans who really like you because they're going to likely to put your name forward, and people who are ace networkers. What do I mean by ace networkers? Is, does anyone got an idea what I mean? The kind of people who know everybody because they may well be introducing you to people. Raise your hands, those of you who love introducing people and putting people in contact. Keep your hands up, though, all of those people. Keep, raise them high. I'm short-sighted even with my glasses. Really, really high. Be proud. Keep them high. Now, keep your hands up. If you are kind of slightly nervous about asking other people for help, can you keep your hand up? It's always the same people. So on the one hand, isn't it, you, you, you love introducing other people, but sometimes we stop asking other people for help. Remember, life is... Um, it's circles, it's, it, we know it's codependent. So don't um, stop other people getting the same joy that you get from helping other people, okay? So don't be afraid to ask other people for their help, their support and advice. And what you're wanting to do is to become, look for the win-win. Who can you help? Who can you put in touch with each other? So it might be today, you know, <laughs> there's a classic one. Here's this classic phrase that lots of people say. Raise your hands, those of you who thought maybe it might be great, you might even pick up a customer today. You know, raise your hands if those of you thought it would be good to perhaps even, I might even meet some potential customers. Only a handful of people, raise your hands, don't be shy. And raise your hands, those people who came here today intending to buy something. Do you see? Do you see what I'm saying? Only one person. So very often, everybody wants to, do you know what I mean? Everyone wants to sell, nobody wants to buy. So that means we need to create authentic relationships, really authentic relationships. So, hmm. There's a number of things we need to go through before we go into some question and answer. Once you go out there, so we've talked about your own existing network and do share with them and see how you can help them and they can help you. So for example, my very, very first clients were an old boss of mine and some people I'd um, worked with through my singing and performing career. And those people, of course, they know you, they're gonna be a fan of you, they're gonna give you some time and it also gives you an opportunity to get some experience under your belt. Um, and they're likely to be recommending you all the time and keep, the, keep those testimonials and so on. So do tell people what you're doing. Raise your hands, those of you who haven't even told friends and family about what you're planning to do. Raise your hands if you haven't. Isn't that interesting? Tell them. Don't be afraid. Once you start going out the networking of the world, you need to always have a few things. And it was interesting, last session on pitching, you need to have something to say, you know, something that's compelling, like in that last pitching thing, you know, I help people to move ahead in their lives and their careers or whatever it might well be. You need to have something to share or to serve, something to share or to serve. How can you help people? Maybe there's some advice you can give people. Maybe you're an accountant and you could say, when you're chatting to people out there networking, here are some just very quick tips if you're starting your business. You've suddenly shown value. Something to show or something to showcase. And my friends who do the creative stuff, actually my two creative friends, raise your hands again, the two people I was just chatting to. Have you got any, any on your iPads or phone or anything, have you got visible examples of some of the things that you've done on your phones? Yeah? Anything here that if I was chatting to you, you could see? Fantastic. So have something to show or showcase, or it might even you just being you, that is an example of what you do. So if you design clothes, wear those clothes. If you design jewelry, you know, have something there to show if you can, and something to sample. I want to talk about these three things. Once you're going out and trying to build your network, it's about three things, credibility and likability. Oh, credibility, likability. Likability is one thing that people don't talk about much. Trust, trust me, are you gonna buy from anyone you don't like? It's not gonna happen. I think it's one of the things that is so um, underplayed, likability but it goes hand in hand with credibility. So credibility, there's two things. The ability thing is what are your skills and your abilities? And then are you credible? What's your track record? Are you good at what you do? Do people like you? Once we've got credibility, we need to, visibility is really important. Coming to events like these, talking to people, chatting to people, online, the stuff we, the online session today, all of these things are part of our visibility. And authority. Authority is a number of things. Yes, it might be about you and your experience. It's also how you show up, isn't it? How you show up how you speak. So one of the quick tip here is that, for example, those of you in the room, if you've got a quiet voice, turn the volume dial up. Those of you who've got a loud voice like me, sometimes you might need to turn the dial down. Those of you who speak fast like me, sometimes you might to slow it down, turn the volume down. Some of you might need to turn, some of you who I'm really passionate about building my business and da da da, you might need to turn the passion up. Some of you like da da da, da yeah, yeah, and I'm, I'm a mindfulness teacher and I do this and I make people feel really, really, really calm you might need to turn that down. Do you know what I mean? So you want to be authentically yourself. 
This one, I love this quote of mine. I'm sorry, I'm just not from that. I'm not really a fan of posting other people's quotes. I'd rather post my own. What people, what people say and feel about you when you leave the room is precisely your job whilst you're in it. I believe that with all my heart. What people think and feel and what they say about you. When you leave the room, that's your job now. It's your job. In Soul Trader, I talk about being in sight, in mind, in, in heart. So in other words, how all the ways that you can be in sight your website, going out to events, going to conferences and shows, um, social media, etc., talking to friends, family. How is it that you can be in mind? Well, being in mind means that you need to be saying the things that are relevant to your customers. You don't speak in your language, you speak in theirs. A number of people have talked about that today. And then being in heart, caring about your customers, caring about other people. Because as we've heard today, ultimately it's not about you. So sometimes we can get stuck in our own mind. Are they like this? Well, it's not about you. You've got to be clear but then it's all about your customer. It's all about your customer. So you want to do, when you're networking, you want to do a blend of networking, some networking where your peers are. Why would you want to network where your peers are? Why would you want to network where your other competitors are? Well, all sorts of reasons. You can learn, isn't it? You might be able to share. When I started coaching, I was at lots of coaching events because there are lots of people who've done it for many years. They could teach me all sorts of things. You can partner up. You want to network where your potential customers are. That might require a little bit of thought. You might need to think about all the different types of customers and where they are, where you might find them. Where complementary services are. So, for example, let's say um, somebody is running a personal training business. What kind of businesses might be complementary to them? Nutrition. Yep. What else? Education, perhaps. Clothing, maybe also massage therapy, all sorts of other therapists, coaches, and so on. So think of, sorry, transportation, perhaps. You know, um, you know. So anything that is related, anything that is related in some way, shape, or form, and where your suppliers are. And what about this one, where key influencers and opinion formers are? That's really important because all of a sudden, let's say you're chatting here, and let's say you, at the end of the day. Let's imagine, anyone here a budding coach? I'll just use this one as an example, anyone a coach? So let's say we've got a couple of coaches here. Why might the coaches want to network with me, for example? And why might they want to take a picture with me and then tweet? Does that give them more credibility afterward? You bet your bottom dollar. So all of a sudden, they're not the same as somebody else. So that kind of thing. Networking where opinion formers are. You can sometimes have an audience with people that you would otherwise not um, ever have. Um, and also socially and spontaneously. I was at an event, <coughs> true story, <coughs> I was running my sole trader and networking events here just the other day, just um, this week. And there were two people, it's quite a small group, a small group for this, um, I think, for the sole trader event. It was really interesting. Of the people that we had there, we had about 10 people there, and by chance, two people knew each other, but they hadn't seen each other for years. They were both from Sheffield, but they met that day at my workshop in London. How spooky is that? Serendipity. Remember, there are many different ways in which we make an impact. Visually and physically, so there's some things I can control, some things I can't control. I, can't, I can control what I wear, I can control um, body movements and so on. Uh, so I've deliberately worn the cover of my book, haven't I, today and so on. Um, but there are some things I can't control, my height, my ethnicity and so on. Um, then there's my voice. So vocal impact is really important. I want to point that out to you. It's really important, I think, that with my background as a singer, again, remember I mentioned that thing about if you've got a quiet voice, you're going to need to turn the volume up. You're going to need to uh, make sure you're really um, engaging. One of the reasons why, think about two current leaders that we have, um, Theresa May and Jeremy Corbyn, both have a little bit of a problem when it comes to communicating, particularly in the media, because their vocal impact isn't that strong. So I'd want to work with them on that and making sure that they're authentic. Do you know what I mean? So if there's, there's lots of... Think about the current, and the current and the past president of the United States. Put aside what you think about their politics. Do they both make a strong vocal impact? You bet your bottom dollar they do. So it's interesting. Vocal impact is interesting. How this actually works is that really all of these different things, and of course the words I say are important, but what happens is that imagine I say to you, and I gave an example of it before. If I say to you, I am Rashid Ogunlaru, I'm a life coach, I help people with their confidence and so on. 
You don't believe me, do you? And so that's what you do. Then you put 55% of your attention on how I come across non-verbally, you know, physically, and you're putting 38% of importance in terms of my tone of voice, the voice, and only 7% on the words itself, because you don't believe me. Do you see what I mean? So that's how that works. So you need to be authentically yourself. And we, I think we've got a very high radar for spotting when people are not themselves. So be yourself. My first tip is just be yourself. Really be yourself. This is really important. In order to build networks, we need to understand a little bit about psychology. And if you think about it, there are so many reasons why we don't see this world the same way. We're going to list a lot of detail on the soul trade or the networking for success workshop. But in a nutshell, we've all got different backgrounds, different beliefs, different values, different experiences, isn't it? We all see the world differently. And that colors the lens that through which we see the world. So one person saying, oh, the word's blue. The other word's saying, oh, the word's yellow. The other one's saying it's green. So when I listen, remember that. When I listen. When I ask open questions, oh, tell me a little bit more about yourself. Then I can understand people, I can relate and be understood. Often people try and jump to stage two. So have you ever had that experience where you go to an event and somebody just pushes in and just shoves a business card in your hand? Have you, has that happened to you today? Don't do it. Who cares? They don't even know you. Why are you doing it? I said to somebody earlier on, giving them a tip, don't do it. Ask the other person about themselves. Take an interest in them. We've got no right. Who cares who Rashid Okunlaru is? Who cares? As we've heard earlier on today, it's all about your customer, it's all about your client. Be genuinely interested in everyone you meet, and everyone you meet will be genuinely interested in you. How not to do it, we've just heard. It's not about talking at people, talking down to people. It's really about rapport, isn't it? Without rapport, there's no respect. No rapport, no respect. It's an impossibility. It's an impossibility, rapport. Sometimes a little bit of small talk yields a huge result, doesn't it? Just that little bit of chit-chat, but then going on to find out about what they do and asking them about themselves, what they do. And that way you've really begun to scope who they are and what they're about. When you're out there networking also, take time to know yourself, what your strengths and your weaknesses are. Are you better with people in person or at events, online? You know, what are your strengths and your weaknesses? Understand the rules of engagement in your particular industry, how you need to be in your industry and decide how you're gonna play that game in a way that's authentic to you. Some of the things that have really worked for me in my career is there's lots of things in personal development that don't chime with me. I'm not a big fan of lots of certain style of personal development, it leaves me cold, it always did. But that became my USP, do you know what I mean? So don't be afraid of being you. I have a saying, know your magic, trust your magic, and know that you're a manifestation of life's magic. Sometimes that might be your, your, your selling point the fact that you're authentic. And I can tell, I can always tell from people's faces, I can tell you know exactly what I mean, right? And you know exactly what I mean. Sometimes the courage is the courage of being yourself. When you're out there networking, anyone find networking in big rooms a little bit daunting? My tip is arrive early, that way, that means instead of you having to meet everyone, everyone has to meet you. Smile, smile, do you remember that? Smile, though your heart is breaking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, be yourself, be authentically yourself. I want to, I just want to say one thing about networking online. See networking online, as a, networking online is incredible. Look at the power of today, what we can do online. I see that online is the window to your world. Meeting people in person is the door. Online, your website, your social media presence is incredibly important. I've been tweeting today and all sorts of things, but meeting people in, the, in person is the door. So online people can, that shop window, it's important, isn't it? So people can see the clothes and all that kind of stuff. They can get a sample of you, what you do in your business. But when people meet you in person, the power of that is, is off the scale. Be mindful of etiquette, ethics, rules and regulations, and be yourself. So do prepare, have your business cards ready, listen, be courteous, polite, follow up. Remember to follow up, so if you've taken cards today, follow up. Do not sell. <laughs> I have a saying, serve, don't sell. Don't expect people to buy there and then, or sometimes even ever. Sometimes people waste their entire life trying to persuade the kind of people who never buy their product about their product, whilst there's somebody else who desperately wants what you do, who you're not talking to. Don't invade other people's space. Be mindful. 
<laughs> about all those other things. Be mindful. I remember in my very, very first job in media, I was aged 18. I worked in a very boozy kind of industry, media and PR. Sorry about the, uh, the stereotypes, but some of that stereotype is true. And at the end of the week one, everyone was going for drinks at the end of the week, and they're having drinks. And I thought to myself, I'm not going to drink. Let me see what they're all like when they've all had a drink. Do you know what I mean? Because reputation is everything. They take years to build, but they take minutes to be destroyed. So know your goals, do your homework. Here are some of my events. I want to kind of open it up into a little bit of a discussion now about authentic networking. So you might have questions either about networking or utilizing your own existing network. Um, any tips around that? I'd be very interested. And I wonder if someone would be happy to do the mic duty for me because I can't. Do Aha. Well, I've got. Thanks very much, Isabel. Anyone got a question? So who's got the first question? Don't be shy. Uh -huh. I'm going to go to the nearest. <laughs> hi, Rishi. My name's Rachel. Hi, um, Rachel. Hi. Um, I find one-to-one -one with people really, really easy. Really mm -hmm. find it um, and a really useful business tool for me. I make luxury hand-knitted accessories, so markets and things like that. I can really talk to customers. Where I really struggle is the online marketplace, my mm -hmm. website and social media. And I feel, I literally feel myself going mm -hmm. <laughs> um, when I'm trying to reach people. And it's one of my main sort of resistors yes. when I'm getting my business to market. And I just wondered if you had any tips at all on how to kind of transfer what you can sort of do in person over mm -hmm. to that sort of arena? Really good question. I think it depends on you and your personality and your customers. One of the things I observed, you said you're good one-to-one, -one, but you're also good one-to-many because how you spoke <laughs> there was very clear, it was very compelling, it was very heartfelt, it was very authentic. Would you agree? Yeah. Oh, thanks. So, <laughs> so I'd say do more of that. So sometimes it's very important that we, for us to get that genuine feedback of what we're like. Um, and please do also give other people feedback. Often we're poor at giving people feedback. So I would do more of that. Maybe if there are opportunities to events, to showcase and to talk, things like this. Remember I said to you that 11 years ago I was sat in that audience and then the year later I was stood here. So I think look at those opportunities where you might be able to showcase in that kind of way, the one-to-many networking and so on. It might mean that the, the, the online might play a lesser role to you. It depends what you want it to. But um, it, I, I think that, yeah, decide, decide also maybe which social media you like most and maybe try one, mm. first of all. So maybe something like, I'm a big fan of YouTube, for example. I love them all. But what I like about YouTube because people can experience me. I love video stuff because people can experience me and what I do. So something that allows you to showcase you and your product would be the one that I'd say to start off with. And maybe also you might want to bring somebody else to do that who has got a, a joy for it. But I'd say you go out there and do what you're doing here because that's what will draw people into your business. Thank you. Okay. Who's, who's next? Who is next? Aha, there's a lady here next to my okay. friend, Kojo. <laughs> I'll come down the front. We're looking for another mic, so... Uh, <laughs> oh, oh and there's enough mic. on there, Great. yes. Thanks. Sorry, was it you? Um, I'm very new to networking. I'm Katie, by the way. Hi, Katie, Not what do you name. do? Um, I'm panicking about that now since I've been in the pitch one <laughs> before. Okay, yeah. I don't have a pitch. Uh, I'm a copywriter. I used to be a teacher, and I'm trying to build a business that's basically copywriting for good causes. Wonderful. Um, one thing that I really struggle with with networking is the rapport and the small talk stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What do you do? Well, have you ever had a moment where you're having a conversation with someone and just all the small talk goes out the window and you panic and you have no, nothing to mm -hmm. say or give? What I do you hear, do? I hear. Well, I'd say that sometimes it might be for you that it might not need to be small talk. It might be you might go straight to just asking them about themselves. Hi, how are you? What's brought you here today? And just chat. It might be that small talk doesn't chime so much with you. So I just asked them about what they do. So, for example, once you started talking about the copywriting for good courses, I was fascinated by that. So it might be that you might go straight to that. Um, uh, but I would just, I, I would worry less about you, and just, um, and think about them because very often other people will be feeling exactly the same thing. Many people find it very nervy. So anything that you could do, just how are you? How did you find the event so far? What's brought you here? Maybe think of about two or three phrases that work for you and try them out. Um, and just be yourself. And then sometimes wait for other people to come to you as well, which will happen, but you won't be the only person feeling like that in that environment. Yeah. Okay, next question. We've got a question here, and then we've got a couple of questions at the back. Yeah, we'll go here, and then we can go to the back. 
Hi, yes. Uh, regarding networking. Oh, tell um, me your name and what you do because oh, that's sorry. an opportunity for you to promote yourself to the entire world who yes. are watching today. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Thank not the you. World. Uh, Some of them. Yeah. My yeah. name is Gloria. Gloria. And I. Oh, so sorry. Gloria. <laughs> Gloria, my friend. I thought you turned your phone on to silent earlier on today. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Somebody's trying to tell you something. Well, I think. Everybody's going to remember it. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> At least. <laughs> um, yeah. Yes. Um, well, um, I, well, my name is Gloria, and I do um, uh, some life coaching for empowering moms. Mm -hmm. well, wonderful. And so uh, for me, it's a kind of, you know, to find moms. So give me the question, because you know I'm a tough person when okay, it comes to the questions. Fine. What's the Where question? I can find some finances to... Um, uh, to get my networking uh, a bit more kind of, you know, with a, a, a good venue, good kind of catering maybe, you okay. know, to help moms. Um, I want to say something slightly controversial. What if there were no finances? I want to kind of look at that the other way for a moment. What if there were no finances? What if there was no opportunity to get funding? Different, different, um, the, the different eco economic situations will be at different times and we'll have different budgets. When I started being a coach, I had no money. I had very little money. I'd been a struggling singer. So, uh, and I'm also, anyone in the room a creative? Raise your hands, all the creatives. I want to say something, and anyone who knows me knows I'm a little bit abstract. There are two talks going on at the same time, one for the head, one for the heart. Mm. The head wants to know, when am I going to find money? Why does Rashid speak so fast? When are we going for lunch? Um, when's he, why didn't he say more about working a room, blah, blah, blah? Can, am I going to get a chance to check my emails? And the heart wants to just authentically be yourself. Mm. So I think this, you, sometimes it's about being creative. Remember that creativity gives birth to money. Yeah. Money does not give birth to creativity. It doesn't. So I remember early on in my business, uh, money wasn't really working, and I thought, maybe I need to get a loan. But I thought to myself, hang on a minute. If the business isn't working now, the money isn't going to solve that problem. I had to learn to be very, very creative. Who are the people you know who might have a venue? Who are the people you know who you could ask? I'm a big fan. Remember, and Soul Trader talks a lot about this. I was really passionate about writing something from the heart where you could build a business on next to no money through the power of relationships, through talking to people. Who do you know who's got a venue? Where could you network that's for free? You know. So I tell you what I will do, though. I'll give you a place at my Networking for Success workshop for free. Oh, and when you're running your events, I want you to offer somebody a space for it for free oh, yeah, when you do please. that. Okay. Thank you so, so if you much. come to me at the end. Thank you so okay, much. You. God bless Oh, that's kind you. of you all. I think there's some questions at the back. Let's take a couple more. And that's also the power of asking questions. Sometimes if you don't ask, you don't get. Yeah. Um, yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Hi, Rashid. I'm Sashi. Hi, Sashi. Hi. What do you do? Um, I've developed my own baby clothing range Lovely. with a unique design concept. Mm -hmm. So my question is, I've got opportunities to network with people that could add value. Mm -hmm. But because of the unique design concept that I have, I find it difficult to express exactly what I do because mm -hmm. of, you know, people copying the idea and most people get non-disclosure agreements when I mm -hmm. pitch to investors or mm -hmm. whatever, but... In a room where I'm networking, how do I overcome that? Well, I think first of all, I'd say intuitively, I think that your personality and your authenticity, again, is a quality. So maybe tell people why you do what you do. Um, you might have to just tell them in very simple terms that you do clothing or, or whatever, you know, the specifics of whatever it is that you do as much as you can. Then you're going to have to trust your instincts about who you feel comfortable enough that you do feel that you can share a little bit about it. Because at yes. some point you are going to need to tell some people. So trust your instincts on that. That would be my tip. And then the right okay. people, I think, I think the right people you'll feel comfortable about and, and the right people will come to support you. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, great. Um, that would be my tip. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Loads of questions. Yeah, lots of you questions. Pick. You pick. Ah, oh, well, there's a lady here, and then there's a lady there. And there's one in the front here. And then there's someone there. Yeah. Hi, Rashid. My name's Ronke. Hi, I Ronke. run public speaking workshops for children. Wonderful. Um, just to help boost their confidence. Wonderful. I know the lady earlier was speaking about the small talk. How mm -hmm. do you handle situations where you are chatting with people and you do want to try and get as many contacts as possible, but you're stuck with somebody who just keeps going on and on. And I probably do yeah. that, yeah. but how do you do that? Funny how enough, do you handle Funny Funnily enough, we cover that in, in the oh, networking for success thing. But so I'll am I coming for free? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you. 
I, I, no, I, I, I'll tell you. Maybe, maybe if you if you put a good pitch, then more than more than happy to. But I would say, um, remember, everyone's there to network. Everyone's there to network. So just have a couple of phrases. It's been, you know, it's been really interesting talking to you. I better carry on networking now. Right. People know it's a networking event. So just have a couple of phrases like that. And, and maybe you might even decide roughly how much time or how many people you want to see first of all until you're comfortable about moving further forward. Okay. That's great, thank you. Yeah, let's take a couple more questions. I'm just going to do a quick time check because I'm also the person who's checking that Rashid Ogunlaru is keeping to time. A and is Rashid Ogunlaru keeping to time? <laughs> yes, Chief, he is. There's a clock up there. Yeah. There's uh -huh. a clock up there. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. <laughs> Who, who's next? Hello, uh, Marzina Kowalska. I help companies through data science and analytics. Uh -huh. So my question is... Um, all this networking concept is a bit alien to me, okay? Uh, I love the idea, uh -huh. <laughs> I really do. So give me but your question. Yes, give right. me. So um, how does it work for, you know, introverts, for highly sensitive people, for people with Asperger's, you know, people that don't look for authentic relationship with other people, yeah. not, you know, sell by. For me, it's very awkward because I'm always worried. Got you, I hear yeah. you, I hear you. Beautiful question, and many people will say it that at my networking for success event. A couple of things there. Remember, there's two types of power. There's loud power and there's quiet power. Many of the people who I think are most authentic and draw people in are actually people who are quiet or introvert. Also, there's the thing about your own perceptions. When you spoke there, you were actually very, very clear and very, very compelling. So actually, you can take that stage and talk to people. But, so decide what kind of works for you. It might be that you might prefer in smaller spaces, or it might be you do a little bit of networking and then you follow it up offline and meet people one-to-one. -one. Um, do you know what I mean? So it might well be that you just don't put so much pressure on yourself. You might say, I'm going to go to an event and I'll just organically speak to whoever I find rather than feeling as though I need to work the whole room. Does that kind of make sense for you? And then I would say that then also, I'd say also start by tapping into your own existing network because then all sorts of opportunities may emerge. For some of you, you may well be so well networked and you might have such a broad network, you might not ever need to do much other kind of stuff. So that would, those would be a few of my tips, first of all. Um, and maybe when you are networking, spot the other people are quiet who don't seem to have somebody to speak to because you won't be alone. Let's take a couple more questions before we, before we close. Oh, yeah, the lady down here. Okay. I notice that the gentlemen are quiet. Why are the few? Yes. <laughs> Hi, yeah. my name is Jemima, uh, Jem for short. Basically, I'm in the process of um, designing a swim cap for people with big hair. Mm -hmm. um, and my whole thing, it's also for people with normal hair, uh -huh. but just to accommodate um, yeah. people with long hair. And your question, um, yeah. My question is, how do, you, how do you effectively network with secondhand network contacts? Because I've been given... When you say secondhand network, right. a contact that somebody else has given you. Yes. Ask them. Say, my first, my first uh -huh. suggestion would be, if somebody else has suggested, if my friend here yeah. has suggested someone to you, mm -hmm. say, thank you so much. Is there any way that you would be happy to put us in touch? Right. Because then that person might even say, hey, I met Jen at this particular event. She mm -hmm. was really clear. She was really compelling. She does these amazing swim caps. Would you be happy to spend some time? So try and do that, because I think it's richer that way. Yeah. And if not, if you have to do that directly, mm -hmm. I would then research that third party yeah. and then make the, 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 the note about them. Yeah. Um, I met, what's your name, my friend? Richard. Richard. I met the wonderful Richard at an event with this amazing speaker. And um, <laughs> I'm joking. And, and, and Richard had mentioned you, and I noticed from your website that blah, 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 and make it about them. Would Thank you be you. happy to spend a few minutes with me? Would be my suggestion. Thank you. Let's take Thanks, one or two more questions. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. I like that. I like that. You're helping each other out. Um, Hi, my name is Dana, and I'm making an um, on-the-go childcare app. Mm -hmm. So my question is, part of my business um, it is going to be a service that I provide. Mm -hmm. And some of it is going to be paid for. Mm -hmm. So give me the question, yeah. Okay, so the question is, I want to do it where some of it is paid for because it's people that you don't know, but then also it will be networking with some of the clients who will know each other. Could Do you think that's okay as a service to run that side by side? Why not? I mean, it's your business. You can be creative about it. It's whatever it, you want it to be. Absolutely. And so, and so what I'm also hearing is almost there's a bit of it that is kind of commercial and a bit of it is almost that you're wanting to gift yeah. certain things. Yes. So I'd say my tip would be just know the numbers. Know, this is for everyone. Know how much money you need to make. Know that number. This is the amount of money I need to make, um, you know, to cover my rent and everything else. One. 
What's the amount of money I seek to make? Write that down. The second number, that how much you seek to make, be honest with yourself about that. What is the big gap in between, if it is a big gap? How much work is that going to involve? How prepared are you prepared to make that work? Because then, for example, one of the reasons why I can afford to give people free space is that the other bits of the business you know, work in that yeah. way. But you've got to be very clear and know that you've taken care of the financial side of business in order to do that. Yeah. Is that is that kind of helpful? Yeah, I, I, but obviously, as a new business, I won't know what I, how much I need to cover certain things. I, is that where the accountant comes in? Yes, it does. Probably <laughs> does. It does. You need to find out how much is the cost of sale, how much does the room cost, how much does this cost, how much does that cost, and and so on. So sit down or sit down with a friend who's really good with numbers. Is is there some because it's it's like um an an ethical and responsible company at the yeah. same time. Is there someone to go to, yes, uh, like a business angel, to explain why, there's a company, how to be? There's a partner to the British Library called Red Ochre, and a guy called Uday Thacker, who I think might be in the other room. Red Ochre. He might have left, but Red Ochre. Ochre, O-C-H-R-E. Let's take one more question before we close. Yeah, lady there. Oh, oh yeah. Let's, uh, oh, I saw this way. Sorry. Hi, Rashid. I'm Aizen. I'm a hospital doctor. Wow. And my idea is to use technology to improve uh, efficiency in healthcare for universal healthcare delivery. Fantastic. So, um, how do you build networks with people, um, international networks, um, when you, it's not feasible for you to leave the country, but you do want to build rich relationships? Start with your own network. Who's in your network? Who I'd think about who's in my network? Who works internationally? Who's got international co connections? Think about the different countries where you're wanting to have those connections and start with your own network. Start with your own network. I mean, also do use social media as well, you know, but start, I always, my personal, my personal thing is that most small businesses, and most micro businesses, find most of their business through word of mouth, through their own relationships, for their own contacts. So I'd really highly recommend you do that connection that you do. I bet you can know lots of other doctors and people in the medical profession who know people internationally. I think you need to mine that network. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Very often we are spending so much time trying to gain new customers, mm -hmm. but there's potential customers or connections under our nose. Mm -hmm. So I'd have the, the website and all the rest of it as the window and then start talking to people in your own network and see if you can build it from there. That would be my cool. tip. Thank you. Okay. Um, we're nearly up to... What, if, has anyone got a burning question? Somebody who's shy who no, normally not ask a question. Who would normally not ask a question? Yeah, my friend who... Yeah, my friend here. Hi, how are you doing? Uh, Henry, co-founder of www.thecvpack.com. Um, so the question is, um, what sort of time do, do we devote to, to networking? So I've got so much other stuff that I need to do on the startup, like search engine optimization and getting my Google AdWords Beautiful question. optimized. How much what time should I be spending networking? I don't know. Um, but I, I would say early on a lot, early on a lot. I think early on a lot of time with your own network mm -hmm. and going out network because you never know. Look at here. Uh, who, who knows people who probably need help with their CV who is a point of career change? Raise your hands, everyone who knows people. So I think you've got to start seeing... Sometimes the funny thing about networking is that sometimes people don't see the immediate value. You might think, I went to that event, I didn't get anything. But then at that event, I met Rashid, and Rashid mentioned this person, then this person mentioned that thing, and I then somebody invited me to that event. So I'd say trace who you found what via. Yeah. I think it's important to spend a lot of time early on also, especially if there isn't that much other stuff going on. Mm -hmm. um, and then begin to measure where do the contacts and the opportunities start coming through by. But again, I think most of us will find that it's the in, it's the in person thing that early on creates this huge traction. So I'd say spend a fair amount of time, but be, be mindful about it. Do be mm -hmm. mindful about it and just and watch. Okay. Um, but also, one last tip is that make sure when you are networking, but like some of the conversations where I was really tough about where's the question, is that sometimes some people are really good and very social, doesn't mean they're really effective networkers. So start off, yeah, by all means with the, the warm talk, the small talk and so on, but then find out about other people's business. Last tip, when I first went out networking, I expected everyone to become my client because I was a life coach, business coach, corporate coach. That didn't happen. But what I found is I started meeting good, bad, indifferent people in all sorts of sectors. I'd meet the person who does CVs, the person who does clothes, the person who does accountancy. And guess what? I never know what kind of clients my contacts will need. So what I do is I collect outstanding, exceptional people in all different fields because that means that when I need somebody who's a web designer, I know somebody's a web designer. So my tip will be collect outstanding people in all fields. Trust your heart. Trust your 
your values, be authentically yourself, don't be shy, be you, enjoy the whole journey of it, know that it, um, it takes many years to become an overnight sensation, help other people, other people will help you, enjoy the journey, and thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you.